Welcome to Doing Business in Africa. I'm Sue Birkus and this time we're in the commercial capital of East Africa, Nairobi, and we're here to find out what it's like doing business in Kenya. Coming up in the show. A look at why despite a devastating post-election violent outbreak and an economic slowdown, Kenya's tourism sector is poised for growth. We find out how Kenyan companies have managed to dominate trade in the East African region and why localizing your product is key to doing business in Kenya. Record tea prices, how Kenyan companies are profiting from the boom and how some are maximizing profit through value addition. And Kenya's capital markets cleanup, plans for drastic development which could double the market cap by 2012. Then Kenya's booming ICT sector, the opportunities generated by the Seacom fiber optic cable. In 1963, Jomo Kenyatta led his country to independence, aligning the economy with capitalism and the West. This was a departure from a trend to the socialist policies adopted by other newly independent African countries, including Kenya's neighbor, Tanzania, then under the stewardship of Julius Nyere. A famous meeting between the two leaders highlights the different economic paths the two countries would take, and ultimately, who would come out tops. Nyere said, I have heard that you are a man-it-man -man society. And Kenyatta replied, And I have heard that yours is a man-it-nothing society. Kenya's economy today is the biggest in East Africa, and its economics runs in tandem with its politics. The end of Daniel Arab Moy's 24-year rule in 2002, during which growth slumped to below 1%, saw Kenya enter an era of unprecedented growth under the leadership of President Mwai Kibaki. But the hotly contested elections held five years later would show the fragility of the nation's politics, inevitably jolting the country into an ethnic war zone, killing 1,500 people and displacing some 400,000. An inflated coalition government was formed, with Kibaki as president and opposition leader Raila Odinga as prime minister. While this was a necessary political shift, it put pressure on already strained government coffers. This, combined with a global financial crisis and a drought which affected the key agricultural sector, slashed growth to 1.7% in 2008 from its peak of 7% the year before. To reach its 2030 development goal of becoming a middle-income country, Kenya needs to grow by 10% from 2012. The World Bank expects growth to quicken to between 3.5% to 4% this year, still much lower than neighboring countries like Uganda and Tanzania, and far below its potential. And it's the services segment, not the mainstay agricultural sector, which will drive this economy forward. The one area Kenya is strong, and we highlight that in our report, is services. Kenya has been traditionally known for tourism. That sector has rebounded, but hasn't grown substantially or much more than it did in other similar countries over the last years, partly due to the political risks you referred to first. But then Kenya is, to some extent, a regional, almost global market leader in some niches of IT, including mobile money. And that was one of the sectors that has seen rapid growth. 77% of Kenyans above the age of 15 now own a mobile phone. And it's possible that within the next five years, every Kenyan who wants to have a phone can have one. And for the Kenyans, it's not a luxury item to chat with your friend, but it's actually a development tool that can make a big impact.